I just, yeah, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I can't even give a proper introduction to this show detailing how it came to be because I have no fucking idea how this show came to be. Like, Sex Swing was a fucking disaster zone, but at least I knew what its origin was, where the idea came from. This show literally came out of nowhere with absolutely no warning and no prior knowledge as to how it came to be. And it sucks. No Man of Nowhere is so bad, I feel I need to issue an apology to the Strangerhood. Like, I'm willing to admit that I just didn't get the Strangerhood or what it was going for, how they had to keep rehashing old ideas in order to keep the masses entertained because they had run out of originality in the future. Oddly enough, Strangerhood kind of served as self-fulfilling prophecy with Rooster T's business model as of late. No Man of Nowhere is Avatar The Last Airbender with a little bit of Final Fantasy thrown in and accompanied by every generic Western movie ever made ever. It's a story about this dude who can do magic in a world where magic is forbidden or lost or some damn thing. And because of this, everyone and their mother wants to drag him across the desert and hang him from the nearest water tower. Right out of the gate, episode 1, I gotta call bullshit. The Nomad is supposed to have never been seen in over a millennia, and yet if the sign and the hints in the first episode are any indication, he was not allowed to leave the Bramble Patch, meaning there was literally nowhere else he could be for all of that time. Unless those records all got purged in a war or a great fire or some one night bender, there should have been no doubt as to where the Nomad was hidden all those years. In fact, it could even have been royal decree that he never left, ever think of that? Like seriously, who can find him to the Bramble Patch and why and how is that knowledge not passed on unless it was for the Nomad's own protection? The last magic user in a thousand years, you'd think there'd be some kind of official record documenting its confinement. Anyway, the characters are so flat and boring that I'm stunned the voice actors willingly contribute to their blandness. Toth has no personality whatsoever and is a bore to watch when she's on screen. Red Manuel exists purely to be as antagonistic to everyone as possible, which begs the question of why he's not facing the sharp end of an executioner's axe for blatant insubordination to his superior. Even Elizabeth Maxwell, who is a delight as Nikki on Camp Camp, sounds almost tired as she gives her scout performances. I just don't get anything from these voice actors, it's like they're giving their lines with guns pointed to the backs of their heads. And don't even get me started on the waste of Funimation talents again. The best voice actor is the Nomad, and that's because he doesn't have a fucking voice. The story has so many plot holes that I refuse to believe any of the writers actually put any thought into the story. Some of this shit is so easy to catch too, like look at this. With your many resources and vast influence, you could offer a reward for the Nomad's capture. Yeah, it sure would be a good idea to put up a wanted poster that offered a reward- OH RIGHT! Like how do you fuck that up? Maybe you can up the reward from what it was before, but if you're going to go through the trouble of establishing a wanted poster, it comes with the understanding that catching the person on the poster will get some kind of reward for doing so. Who the fuck let this guy into the meeting with one of the reigning monarchs? Why isn't he outside shoveling horse shit? Get lost, you pedostash wearing fuckstuff. The grown-ups are having a conversation. And it's little things like this, like if water is such a scarce resource in the capital, why don't they just take the water from the Bramble Patch? There was plenty of it there, and there's that giant hippo that can basically produce infinite water geysers. I mean, I know you're pretty much sacrificing the knowledge of the city, what with having to feed it books in order to produce water, but let's be fair, no one in this fucking country is benefiting from them. The characters don't really interact in ways that make sense. Rank doesn't seem to matter. Toth's men are openly disrespectful to her, which, given the kind of world they live in, just baffles me. There is so much blatant disrespect for the leader of the king's personal bounty hunter group. Like the Dawn I get, but all of her subordinates? In a society where old people are pulling their teeth out for a sip of water, these guys should be lining up to kiss her ass in the hopes that she'll remember their fucking names. Why would the Carnies not want to cooperate with the monarchical government that would just as sooner have them all executed? There's not even any dramatic tension to these scenes. You know immediately the Nomad will escape because every other character in this show is incompetent. All of them. Without fail. They're all useless. El Rey told Don Paragon to tell Toth's team to get the Nomad and then told them not to in favor of other bounty hunters. Like, why do we have to six degrees of Kevin Bacon this shit? It's such a convoluted way of going about things. Why does every character have to needlessly complicate their actions? And all that's not even getting into the animation, which doesn't really look all that good. Like, the shadows are at weird angles, the lighting is weird in a lot of places, the character designs look awkward and off-balance a lot of the time. Toth looks like she has one boob in a lot of her shots, which might be some weird callback to the myth that Amazon women cut off one boob to use a bow, which as far as I can find is an urban legend and not actually true, and the only reason I bring any of this up is because I was asked to, so go yell at them over it and not me. But like, X-Ray and Vav's art was simple, but still felt fine for what it was. Same applies to Camp Camp. Nomad, there's something about the animation that just feels off. It almost feels like a Newgrounds Flash animation. I don't know, I'm no animation expert. Floof artists can help you out better than that. It just feels unfinished almost, like it wasn't properly thought out or evaluated or was missing a step in the process.
But I mean, a lot of the show feels this way. The show doesn't feel like any thought went into it at all. It feels like they just threw it all together overnight and decided to roll with it. Like, they pulled support off of other shows for this? Why? What were they thinking the show was going to be? And all this wouldn't be so bad if the jokes were at least funny, but... Quick! Help Red Manuel! He's claustrophobic! Though much too proud to admit it! Really? That qualifies as a fucking joke? I mean, I know it's Friday when these episodes air, and your audience is probably tired from the week, but Jesus Christ. Quite a long way from the good old days of Red vs. Blue, wouldn't you say? I heard screaming in Spanish and bullets flying through the air, so either that was Lopez, or this is Mexican New Year. And the most frustrating part about it? They're proud of this show. They're going on and on as if this is the greatest fucking thing they've ever made in their lives. Like, guys, raise your fucking standards, please. You're professionals. You can do better than this, surely. You know, I'm willing to admit the show just isn't for me, but I really have no idea who this show is supposed to be for at all. It simultaneously feels too old for kids and too dumb for adults. The South Park crowd, I guess? Like, there's just no consistent feel to the show. There's no consistent... anything. You know what's funny, though? If this show had just been about the Nomad Scout going off in adventures, I think I would be a lot more forgiving on it. Because the best part of episode one was the montage of the two of them exploring the Bramble Patch. It was simple, it was cute, and it left more of a positive impression on me than... We're... The Mill Preservation Society! Oh god, I'm back in Final Fantasy X-2. The Kindergartians! No Man of Nowhere is a bunch of colors on a screen for anyone that hasn't consumed a single piece of media. It's unoriginal even in its unoriginality. I'm getting this video out now so that I don't have to watch anymore. It's the equivalent of that one scene in Clockwork Orange where they strapped the dude to the chair and tortured him with images. I can't fathom why they decided to go with this idea, let alone make an entire series about it. My only suggestion is, watch something else. This is sex swing level of just unwatchable garbage. Oh, and one more thing. We live in an age where everything is inspired by something. Everything has taken influence from some other media, be it overtly or subtly. Fifty Shades of Grey was a fanfiction of Twilight, Hunger Games has many things influenced from Battle Royale, and Mother is very clearly inspired by Rosemary's Baby. And I don't inherently think this is a bad thing, to look at the tools left behind by a work and continue to work with them, either by expanding upon ideas that maybe weren't fully fleshed out, or providing a different tune for them to work with. However, if and when you're going to do that, you should take care to make sure that you make the work as much yours as you possibly can. This can be by redesigning character appearances, giving them new motivations, new characteristics, plot lines can take a different turn or have a deeper impact, or everything else that happens. The overall goal and or outcome is different, although the stage is set up similar. Those kind of things can have hints of the old work while still maintaining a new story, and you really want to try and do this and not make it so blatant that you ripped something off. My point is, when you have a character that looks like the love child of Prince Zuko and Toph, with them taking on both the namesake and appearance of the latter, and the clothing, personality, and motivations of the former, and trying to pass it off as a new character in what already feels like a terrible Last Airbender ripoff, it's going to do little to stop me from making a phone call on Nickelodeon and inquiring as to when the lawsuit is taking place. But hey, that's just me. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, uh, check out my channel where I have more reviews on Red vs. Blue, Ruby, and other Rooster Teeth inspired shows. I've also been working on a Let's Play of an old Nintendo 64 game, Aiden Chronicles, and I will probably do more Let's Plays in the future. And if you want, you can support me on Patreon. Even $1 goes a long way to helping support me and making more content for you guys. Catch you later!